And what I'm going to talk to you about is the Spectra XT, the extended platform in Q-switched lasers for pigmented lesions and more. So what makes the Spectra XT system so different from other Q-switched lasers? Well, basically because it's five lasers in one. First of all, we have the basic 1064 nanometer Q-switched system. Then we have 532 nanometers visible green, 595 nanometers visible yellow, and 660 nanometers visible red. And all of these deliver a five to seven nanosecond pulse width, which is one of the shortest pulse widths among any Q-switched system on the market. But what makes Spectra special is the Spectra mode. And the Spectra mode is this 300 microsecond quasi long pulsed 1064 nanometer uh, uh, pulse width. And with all of these, we can deal with any pigmented lesion, epidermal, dermal, or compound. Uh, we can remove tattoos, and thanks to this 300 microsecond pulse width, we can also enter the field of skin rejuvenation. So it's, it's a workhorse and a multitasking system. So let's look at the science. First of all, when we look here at, at the wavelength from 400 to near infrared beyond 1000, you can see that as we approach the longer wavelengths, we get deeper penetration. But as we approach the shorter wavelengths, we get better absorption in blood and melanin, which are the, the two targets we're interested in. Therefore, we have to balance these. So here we have melanin, oxy, and deoxyhemoglobin. And the first wavelength we look at is 532 nanometers visible green. It's excellent for discrete epidermal pigmented lesions, but it can also deal with any red or yellow pigment in tattoos that is recalcitrant to 1064. However, we can also use it for very small teleangiectatic lesions. Then the next wavelength is 595 visible yellow, and that can deal with these tattoo pigments that uh, have not been dealt with by 1064. But more interestingly, it can deal with vasculogenic problems, for example, post-acne erythema and so on. Then we have 660 nanometers visible red, and it deals with these tattoo pigments, but it can also deal with discrete epidermal lesions. And in fact, it's safer than 532 nanometers. And I'll go into that in detail later in the presentation. And finally, we have the basic wavelength of 1064, deep penetrating, absorbed in melanin, with also some absorption in blood, but not at the Q-switched uh, wave, uh, Q-switch pulse width. Uh, deep dermal pigments are the target for 1064, and of course, blue-black tattoos. And with that 300 microsecond pulse width, we can also do some skin rejuvenation. And you will see some examples of that in the presentation. Spectra XT offers a selection of ergonomic hand pieces, giving accuracy and precision with extended functionality. Let's take a quick look at the hand pieces. First of all, we have the zoom hand piece. And as the name suggests, you can go from one to six millimeters at 1064 in a number of easily switched steps, thanks to the collar on the hand piece. Uh, it's auto detected and also spot size change is auto detected by the system. Clinical indications are black and dark tattoos and dermal pigmented lesions such as nevus avota, abnorm, uh, any kind of, uh, any kind of um, melanogesic lesion in the dermis. And at 532, we can deal with red tattoos, but we can also deal with epidermal pigmented lesions, lentigenase, freckles, seborrheic keratosis, and so on. Then we have our collimated toning handpiece, and it 
also offers a range of spot sizes up to a nice large 10 millimeter spot. Um, again, auto detected. And clinical indications are the same as the Zoom handpiece, uh, black and dark tattoos and dermal pigmented lesions. But with this handpiece, we can also perform what we call laser toning. And you're probably familiar with this term. And we can use that to treat melasma, PIH, and some aspects of skin rejuvenation. For 532, it's basically the same as the Zoom handpiece. So what's the difference between the two? Well, with the uh, Zoom handpiece, we can change the spot size on the fly. We don't have to change anything. We just click on the handpiece and we can instantly get the spot size we want. But you have to keep the distance guide in contact with the tissue because if we move away from the tissue, you can see the spot size will change and that will dramatically change the irradiance. Keep the handpiece perpendicular to the tissue to maximize penetration and minimize reflection. With the collimated zoom handpiece, we can also change the spot size on the fly, but the distance between the handpiece and the tissue is not critical because the beam is parallel. It's collimated. We recommend 1.5 to 2 centimeters away from the tissue. And this allows us to paint the laser energy over the skin, as in laser toning, very easily. But once again, you have to keep the handpiece perpendicular to the tissue. Then we move on to the 595 uh, visible yellow handpiece, and we call that our gold toning handpiece. The handpiece is auto-detected, but when you change the spot size, you have to put it in manually on the GUI, the touch screen. Clinical indications, we can deal with uh, blue tattoos that have not responded to 1064, but more interestingly, from skin rejuvenation, we can deal with post-acne erythema, inflammatory acne, facial flushing, rosacea, and the vascular dermal hyperactivity that makes melasma sometimes very, very difficult to treat. And finally, we have our Ruby Touch handpiece. Ruby stands for Ruby like versatile YAG because the 660 nanometer red wavelength is approaching the 693.4 nanometer wavelength of the Ruby. Again, handpiece auto detected, uh, manually insert the spot size. Clinical indications are those tattoos in the green and yellow that have not responded to 1064, but for skin rejuvenation, this is an excellent wavelength for discrete epidermal lesions, uh, lentigines, freckles, seborrhea, keratosis, and so on. Tattoo removal is basically the bread and butter of the Q-switched laser. And with these characteristics, ultra short Q-switched pulse, very high peak powers, high fluencies, and the pure radiant heat effect, we can meet the criteria of selective photothermolysis in pigmented lesions. So we can destroy selectively pigments such as melanin and tattoos, but with this approach, we also severely damage or destroy the pigment bearing cells. However, surrounding tissue is spared. Works like this. Here is a tattoo pigment coming into the dermis and it's instantly seen as a foreign body. So it's too large for macrophage activity. Therefore, it's encapsulated in a little envelope of fibrotic collagen. In comes the 1064 nanometer Q-switched energy incident on the target, heats the target up very quickly with minimal spread of heat and the target is destroyed. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on the circumstances, the encapsulated structure is also damaged. Debris are now small enough to be removed by macrophage activity, and this is the nanosecond domain pulse giving selective photothermolysis.
It's excellent when removing tattoos because we want to destroy that protective coat of, of uh, fibrotic collagen. And it's also necessary when we're treating dermal pigmented lesions. All right, so the, here's, here's the, the process of tattoo removal. This is a linear tattoo. So we're using a small spot size, six to eight joules per square centimeter. And you can see the test shots have turned white. That means the ideal endpoint. Here's the whole tattoo lesion treated. And you can see that all the, the, the white points showing that the, the tattoo pigment has been reached with a little bit of erythema around the whole area. And six weeks after three treatments with an interval of from four to six weeks between treatments, we get this excellent result. So here's a typical dark tattoo. Uh, spot size now is four mil, four to six joules per square centimeter. And these are your go-to parameters for treating tattoos. This is seven treatments later, four weeks to six weeks between treatment. Excellent clearance, no pigmentary changes in the skin. Here we have a darker skin type. Uh, again, we have four millimeters, four joules per square centimeter because it's off the face. Uh, and, and when we're off the face, we don't have the uh, pilosebaceous units that we do on the face to aid quick wound healing. Six weeks after three treatment sessions, very nice result. We can also deal with traumatic tattoos. This gentleman came off his bicycle and impacted with the road. So he's got little bits of asphalt uh, stuck in his skin. And this is again, four millimeters, four joules per square centimeter and an excellent result. The pigmentation has all been removed, but the scars will require a different laser approach. Let's now look at epidermal pigmented lesions. And for a while, 532 nanometers green was the go-to wavelength. And it also works through selective photothermolysis with melanin as the chromophore in the pigmented lesion. So it's used for discrete epidermal lesions because it doesn't penetrate very well. If you remember back to that uh, slide with the absorption spectra, uh, because it's so heavily absorbed in melanin and blood, it doesn't penetrate deeply. So it's ideal for pigmented lesions in the epidermis, but we can also use for small superficial facial telangiectasia. This is the end point for 532 nanometers, mild frosting or whitening of the area. If we see epidermal detachment, then the fluence is too high. So we dial back on the fluence. If we see mild erythema without whitening, the fluence is too low. So we dial up the fluence, but we don't retreat this spot. We move on to the next spots and then come back to that spot at the subsequent treatment session. These are the uh, typical uh, lesions that we can treat with 532. And you can see we use usually 2.6 uh, zoom handpiece, uh, 0.6 joules per square centimeter and upwards, depending on the lesion, uh, one single shot per, uh, per second and four to six weeks between treatment, depending how uh, large the extent of the lesion was. Here's an example of freckles, ephelides at baseline. And after one treatment session, eight weeks later, really nice result. Uh, freckles have all gone. That little bit of flushing has also been nicely dealt with. Um, but of course, next summer, uh, she'll develop freckles again because that's the nature of the beast. How about solar lentigenase, right? Well, now I'm going to talk about the 660 nanometer wavelength compared to the 532. Here we have a 79 year old female, solar lentigenase on the back of her hand. We're going to treat one hand with 532 and the other with 660. Here's the result five days after treatment. 
When we blow the, uh, the, the, the image up, we can see blood blisters in the 532 treated hand. That's because of its high absorption in blood. However, 660 has much lower absorption in blood and there are no blood blisters. There is simple erythema. Then when we look 14 days after treatment for the 532 treated hand, there is some erythema, uh, no erythema, 14 days after treatment and probably a slightly better result. Let's look at it in, in, on the face. Here we have a 65-year-old female with fairly large solar lentigenase, courtesy of Dr. Huang from Taipei. And this is eight weeks after one single treatment session. Really nice result. Now, notice also that the skin condition has improved, as well as removing the lentigenase. Here we have a 59-year-old female with solar lentigenase on the forehead and eight weeks after a single treatment session. Another lady with um, melogenetic problems in the face, baseline, and two weeks after one single treatment session. So you can see this 660 Ruby Touch handpiece is a very interesting handpiece for discrete epidermal lesions. And later on this afternoon, you will be able to see this handpiece being demonstrated uh, by Alex and his team. Laser toning is something you are probably familiar with. We use the 1064 Q-switched beam. We use a very large spot size with the collimated handpiece, and we use very, very low fluencies, and that is incredibly important. We use multiple passes uh, with, with, with the collimated handpiece, and the whole idea of the, the low fluencies is that we want to give a mild effect. And we want to look at melasma in particular. So what is the, the logical approach with melasma? When we want to keep damage at the dermoepidermal junction down, particularly in darker skin types, we want to damage the melanosomes in the melanocytes and melanin granules in the keratinocytes, but leave the cells alive, because that way we cut down on inflammation. And this is the theory of subcellular selective photothermolysis, which equals laser toning. And here's how it works. There's our selective photothermolysis with the uh, confined damage, but the damaged uh, cell containing the pigment. And in comes these multiple passes of of very low fluence, and we're talking from 0 0.9 joules per square centimeter incident on the target. It heats up swiftly, but gently. It destroys the pigment, but it leaves the structure intact. And that is the whole principle behind laser toning. And here it is demonstrated with ultrastructural findings with 3D tomography uh, 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 placed in front of a scanning, uh, sorry, transmission electrophotomicrograph. These are melanocytes from a melasma patient. You can see the dendritic processes extending up into the, the uh, stratum spinosum. And as if you look at the stratum spinosum at these, these daughter keratinocytes, you can see the, the melanin cap over the nucleus. This is from the same patient, uh, an adjacent site, after eight laser toning sessions at weekly intervals. The melanocyte is still alive, but it has undergone a dendrectomy. <laughs> and that means that it's not going to be able to produce nearly as much melanin nearly as quickly. And again, when you look at the, this, the transmission electron micrograph, you can see that a lot of that excess melanin in the daughter keratinocytes has been removed. 
So this is a patient from the same study that reported that uh, ultrastructural finding. One side of the face was to be treated and the other side was not treated. Uh, treatment interval is one session per week. And you can see that the treated side has very nicely cleared the melasma, but it's still quite apparent in the untreated side. Here we have a darker skinned patient, uh, a type four skin, two to four passes per session, one to 1.4 joules. And this is six months after 10 treatment sessions. And you can see that not only has the melasma been removed, but her skin condition has dramatically improved. That is something that laser toning can do even if there is no melasma it can tone the skin to give a really nice result. It can also treat PIH. This lady had a nevus spilus on her nose. It was treated with 532 and it left this PIH. The PIH was then attacked with hydroquinone and kojic acid and, and other lightening agents over a five month period with no result. However, 1064 nanometer laser toning, seven treatment sessions at 1.3 joules per square centimeter, and it's gone. And the nice thing about PIH is that once it's gone, it's gone because it is the result of damage. It's not the result of something in the tissue. So unique to Spectra XT is the 595 gold toning, which allows us to treat vasculogenic conditions. Also the vicious yeah. circle we find in melasma, post acne erythema, post laser redness, rosacea, and so on. So here we have persistent post laser redness. This young lady had a fractional CO2 treatment for skin rejuvenation 10 weeks previously and it hasn't cleared. So what has happened is it has induced some form of rosacea. Uh, therefore, we're going to use one side with the 595 and the other side untreated. And this is three days after the one treatment session. Very nice lightening of that redness. Now, 595 is the same wavelength as the pulse dye laser but this does not work in the same way. The pulse dye laser destroys blood vessels. The 595 laser calms them down so that we get this reduction in redness. This is um, an example of post-acne erythema. The acne itself has been mostly removed, but very disappointingly, many patients uh, are left with this post-acne redness. It will go away two to three months, but if we use 595 gold toning two weeks after the second treatment session and it's gone. We can actually use it also on active acnes, courtesy of my good friend Swapmil Shwa in India. This is a really nasty example of some nice pustules. And here is six weeks after only two treatment sessions. Then he will reduce the fluence and he'll treat that post acne redness that is left there. The Spectra XT is famous for the Hollywood peel. <laughs> it used to be called the Spectra peel. But then when the system was introduced into the, the, um, the clinics in Los Angeles, uh, it became very, very popular amongst the Hollywood crowd, and it was renamed the Hollywood Peel. And it's excellent for acne, for tired skin, and for enlarged pores. It is based on this carbon lotion as a photo enhancer. The carbon lotion is FDA approved with uniform, very small carbon particles. It's spread evenly on the face and allowed to sink in over 10 to 20 minutes so that it sinks into the skin and makes its way into the pores. We use the spectra mode first, that's the 300 microsecond pulse. Uh, 
So there you can see the photo enhancer in this little diagram. It's formed the thin film over the skin and down into the plugged pore. In comes the laser and it is totally absorbed in the carbon. Uh, the carbon uh, black is, it, it will absorb any color. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's visible or near infrared. So all of the laser energy is transferred to the carbon particles. They heat up, but they heat up without any ablation. The heat then spreads down through the epidermis into the dermis, and we get heat shock proteins around about 48 to 49 degrees Celsius. And these are facilitators for collagenesis from fibroblasts. Uh, with this one, we match the, the, the spots. We don't overlap and we give only one uh, pass. Then we move to the Q-switched mode, five nanoseconds, and, and at these parameters, 1.5 to 2.2, we use a 30% overlap with three to four passes um, with the eight millimeter or 10 millimeter uh, collimated beam. And then when you start off, you would probably want to start with five hertz, but as you become more comfortable, you can move up to 10 hertz. And this has a completely different and very dramatic reaction in the tissue. It literally blasts the carbon particles off the surface of the skin without any heat being transferred to the skin, because this is a non-linear effect. You will see a plasma spark being created, and then there is a photoosmotic shock wave, which is driven down into the tissue. And we know that photoosmotic shocks are beneficial for skin rejuvenation. And as the particles fly off the tissue by kinetic energy, they take with them some of the stratum corneum, hence the name the peel. So this is uh, in, in action and you can see the plasma spark. You can see the carbon film being removed from the tissue completely atraumatically and athermally. And the results are very nice. Uh, here we have some pustular acne at baseline, a six month follow up after six treatment sessions, just beginning to erupt again. So it's time for some more treatment. Here we have acne scars and photoaging at baseline. And this is in a type uh, one, two patient from the USA. And at four weeks after four treatments, calmed everything down very nicely. Large pores are an excellent indication. Here we have at baseline, and here we have two weeks after a single treatment session. So the versatile Spectra XT Q-switch neodymium YAG laser. Of course, these days, everybody is raving about the picosecond laser, but with this particular system, you can keep the magic of the Q-switch system. It lives on. Thank you very much indeed for your kind attention. You can, cannot ignore the science. You can't ignore the results. I believe it is the laser for all reasons and for all seasons. Shay Shay.